Happy birthday, America. What does your family do on the 4th of July? We get together, cook food together. Sometimes we're in parades. We go swimming with friends and we have a picnic and watch fireworks. Fireworks? Fireworks. Fireworks. Watch the fireworks show. Shoot off fireworks. We just have lots of fun. Why do we set off fireworks on the 4th of July? It was when our Declaration of Independence was signed. Because John Adams said that's how we celebrate it. Because it's cool. Do you have a favorite firework? Big ones. The Roman candles. The blaze. I like the sparklers. Little box and it shoots like 20 fireworks up at the same time. They all just blow up. I'm kind of afraid of fireworks. What was the Revolutionary War? It was the time that we were fighting Great Britain. It's like when all like did a big huge war. It was like all around. We are trying to gain our freedom. In Boston, what were people throwing overboard from the ships into the sea? Really expensive tea. The tea taxes were very unfair for them. So they decided to feed it to the fish. Why did our founding fathers wear wigs? Because that was the classy thing to do, to look fancy. Because back then they'd lose their hair very quickly and it was slightly embarrassing. Who is your favorite founding father? George Washington. He always seemed like a strong man. He didn't seem like he would ever break. Benjamin Franklin. I kind of want to be like him because he's so smart. What was the document they wrote to create our government? Treaty of Paris. Wait, no, 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 sorry. Um, Constitution. The Constitution. The Constitution. First one was the Articles of Confederation. What's the Stars and Stripes? Our American flag. The stripes are the 13 colonies. The stars represent all the states. What song is our national anthem? Oh, say, can you see? The star... Wait, no. How do I not know this? Star, spar, uh, star Spangled Banner? What do soldiers do? They defend us. They fight for us. They protect our freedoms and our beliefs. If they weren't there, we wouldn't have freedom. What does freedom mean? You have freedom of your speech and religion and your actions. If we weren't free, we wouldn't be what we are. Why is America special? We give opportunities that some other countries don't have. Written in the Bill of Rights and all the amendments. How does America help the world? It helps other countries be free. Showing an example for other countries that might want to change. We have a ton of charities that we help people with. Donate our clothes, food packages, send nurses and doctors so we can take care of their wounds, help the poor and give money to them and build houses. What do you think God likes most about our country? How we have freedom and we treat everyone equally. That we're always thinking. And we are trying to tell other countries about him and spreading the word. Happy birthday, America. Happy birthday, America. God bless the USA. God bless America. Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to the Vineyard. We're so excited you found us online. My name is Adam Walters. I'm one of the lead pastors here. We want to say happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day. What a great day of celebration. Uh, I hope that today will be a time of family, with friends, with fireworks, with all the things that, that we do on a day like today. I hope that uh, if you found us this weekend, though, that you will find Jesus here alive and well and active in this church. As we engage our cities with Jesus' love and good news, we want your help in something. Would you check in on Facebook, jump into the chat? Would you share this video feed with your family and with your friends so that they can experience Jesus' love and good news through this stream this weekend. We love when you guys do that. It's such a helpful way to not only get our name out there, but for you to go, man, God is doing some amazing stuff in my church. And we want you to share that with everyone that you know, with everyone that you participate with. Um, another thing, guys, this morning, if you've never uh, gotten onto our email list, would you text this number that's at the bottom of the screen, 217-418-7557. Uh, give us your name and your email. Someone will reach back out to you if you want them to for prayer. But the other thing that you can do is just get on our email list so you know what's happening in the life of our church. Well, today is going to be a great day. We're going to have worship. We're going to have teaching. We've got some fun videos for you guys to participate in uh, as we celebrate Independence Day together here, as we celebrate our freedom in Jesus here as a church. Uh, and we can't wait to share all of that with you. But we love to start with a word of prayer, uh, and then we'll jump right into some singing this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, thanks for everyone who's found us online. Thanks for everybody who comes to our live services this weekend. We believe 
Holy Spirit, that you're going to do infinitely more than we could ask or imagine through this video and through our services and through this community, God. We believe you've got big plans for us. And so today, as we celebrate our freedom, you know, from oppression, our freedom as a country, we celebrate our freedom also in you, Jesus, that we are free indeed from our sins, from our past, from our brokenness, from our hangups, our hurts, Lord. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's go ahead and worship together, friends.
Tommy and we are the Skit Guys. And we're here to talk to you about Independence Day. Yeah, that's right. It was a dark time when the aliens invaded, but the president jumped up on that truck and said, we will not go quietly into the night. And we had our Independence Day. You were thinking of the movie. They made a movie. Why don't we talk about what the 4th of July is in a general sense? Sounds great. I will take point on that. You don't have to do that. 4th of July is a time of year when it's usually hot. That's it? Well, it is hot. I mean, like, like seriously hot, unless, I mean, unless you live in Canada or something. All right, well, they don't have July 4th in Canada, just in America. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're saying that other countries' calendars go, like, from July 3rd to July 5th? No one's saying it isn't hot. I just think maybe we should give people a little more, you know, uh, a little more stuff. You know, like the important elements. So you, you want me to cover the periodic table? All right. I would just feed you, okay? So the 4th of July celebrates our independence from... Our parents. No. Yes. No! I celebrate every year the day I got out of Mama's house. Okay. We celebrate our independence from Great Britain that we won after fighting the Revolutionary War, all right? In which we were led by General... Contractors, mm. which are much better than just a handyman. They just have a, a better general knowledge base of building. I'm gonna take a walk. Was it, was it General Motors? So Tommy, what do you think about when you think about the 4th of July? I'm just gonna try to help you. Just what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? 4th of July? Fireworks. Fireworks, yeah, good, good, fireworks. Okay. okay. Keep going, you think of fireworks. Yep, that's what okay. I think of too. Okay. No, no, okay, well, I mean you, go ahead. Nope. What else, what else do you think? Fireworks. Okay, okay, let's let's think of something besides the fireworks. Uh, 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 bottle rockets, mm -hmm. uh, screaming memes, uh, M80s. Uh, Let's just try to get the candles. Fireworks. Okay, all right. Can we just please get off the fireworks? Are you even American? You want to know what the 4th of July is about? It's about freedom, but it's so much more than that. It's about opportunity. While we have the freedom to not agree with everyone on everything in this country, one thing we should all agree on is that we live in one of the most blessed countries in the world. This 4th of July, spend time celebrating the freedom you've been given. Celebrate the rights you have and don't let it end there. Appreciate it all year round and be glad our forefathers signed the Declaration of Independence so, so many years ago. You are so smart. Well, thanks. Hey, God bless you. Did somebody sneeze? And God bless America. Happy 4th of July. All right, welcome back everybody. So glad you're here. Again, my name is Adam and we are just, just grateful that you guys have joined us for this online experience. A couple of quick uh, housekeeping things to do before we jump into our teaching this weekend. Um, we have a small group leader training coming up here very, very soon. Uh, the date here is on the bottom of the screen that we would love for you to be a part of everyone. If you've never taken a uh, group's training before, if you're currently leading a group or you've led a group in the past and you're thinking about leading a group again, or you just 
just want to know how we lead and engage our leaders in small groups. And small groups are such a vital part as we engage our adults with Jesus' love and good news and community, uh, sometimes in a home, sometimes here at the building. But this leader training is going to be vital and essential to every single one of our leaders uh, who are part of the church right now. And so I want to encourage you to sign up for that email the church, text the church, message the church and say, hey, I want to be part of that leadership training. We want to make sure we have enough materials and food and snacks, all the things you need to have at group leader training on that evening. Come up here in just a couple of Wednesdays. Uh, the other thing that's happening here in our live services is we've only had one, we're having one family service today. So that's a kind of an exciting thing uh, that we're doing as we kick off our Preach It series, which I'll talk to you about just a little bit later, um, but our Preach It series that we are just kind of really excited to see what God does through uh, our team this summer. Um, and we're able to do all the things that we do, whether it's small groups or it's outreaches to the poor or it's, um, you know, uh, doing stuff for our Revolution Student Ministries or for our Kingdom Kids or just having services, having this online and live community, uh, church planting in South Carolina. We're able to do everything that we do because of your generosity. And your generosity has made this church an amazing place uh, for my wife Corey and I to be leaders in, uh, for the staff to lead in, amazing place for people to find Jesus. Um, you know, as we always say, like one of the, the big, beautiful expressions of people finding Jesus is through uh, water baptism. We've had, you know, over 50 of those over the last five years of us being around. But guys, we get to do all this stuff because God has poured his heart into us, poured a mission to, into us, and then you've been inspired to give towards that mission and vision. In fact, the easy way to do that, vineyardbloomington.com, the link's at the bottom of the screen right now. Click on that, follow the instructions. Super mobile friendly. If you've got your, your mobile device handy, you can do that on there. You can jump on and, and give through the website. Uh, you can give towards church planting or towards the building or towards Thanksgiving food boxes or just to, to tithes and offerings, the things that keep this place running on a regular basis. And we just celebrated the end of our year, um, our, our fiscal year, our financial year is from July 1 to July 1. And so we just celebrated the end of that and we just had an amazing, amazing year. And so we want to say, a big thank you to all of you who have given over the last 12 months uh, here. Let me pray. Father, you have been so gracious to us and so generous to us, and so we give back a little bit towards you, God. Whether it's $1, $10, $1,000, $10,000, $10, it doesn't matter, God. We know that you are going to take um, the heartbeat behind those gifts, and you're going to multiply them to change somebody's life this week, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Again, thanks. Uh, follow those instructions. Uh, uh, click on the give button. Um, give uh, where your heart is inspiring you to give this weekend. Thank you so much for supporting uh, us as we engage our cities with Jesus' love and with his good news. Um, again, easy, mobile, friendly way to do that as well. Um, one last thing I've got to do here according to my schedule before we uh, jump into the message, and that is we are starting our Preach It series. Now, what does Preach It mean? Well, here in July, um, we're inviting a few different faces um, to preach uh, through the next couple of weekends, um, and we are just excited about what that's going to look like for you. You know, one of the things that we believe in around here is team. Uh, we believe in engaging our leaders in purposeful teams around here, and so if we're engaging uh, our leaders and teams, sometimes that means different people speaking out the heart of God to us. You hear a lot, of course, from me and from my wife. Uh, we're probably the main speakers here. We have a few other staff members, but over the course of the next couple of weeks, we're going to maybe introduce some new faces to you, um, and we're going to introduce to you um, maybe some new ideas. So we just said, hey, this summer, we want to take some of these, these guys and gals that uh, don't preach very often. We want to say, okay, you guys, Give us your best sermon this summer. And so uh, we're going to have this Preach It series for the next couple of weeks. And to kick it all off, we do have kind of a familiar face. He preaches uh, several times a year. One of our outreach leaders, um, his name is Andy Hegg. Andy does an amazing job helping lead our, our ministry prayer teams here on the weekends, on a week-in, week-out basis. And Andy uh, speaks from time to time. And beyond all that, happy accident here on July the 4th on Independence Day, Andy is also a lieutenant in the army. And so he's going to bring us our message this weekend on the promised land. Pastors 
um, here at the Vineyard Bloomington along with my wife Lauren. I'm just, I'm really excited this morning. It's, it's, it's a good day and it's an exciting day. Um, some of you online know us, some of you, you, you don't know us, um, but uh, my wife Lauren actually, she, she preached a sermon about four to six weeks ago and um, she actually talked about something we went through last year. We went through a miscarriage last year and just the grief process that we went through and everything that kind of entailed with that. Um, but uh, some of you who are watching online have probably seen on social media that we actually just announced uh, Lauren's pregnancy. And it's something that we're extremely excited to share and to, to step into and into parenthood and everything like that. Um, but it's actually really interesting because it goes right along with what I wanted to talk about this morning. And so what is interesting about our pregnancy this time is that its, its foundation is promise. And I'll, I'll explain that because, um, so we, we did this event. We did this event uh, last weekend where we went and just it shared the gospel and, and served our community and it was amazing. And we were at some, some preparatory meetings for this event and uh, we were there just talking through logistics and things like that. And there were some of us there who were just on our lunch break, so we had to cut out of the meeting a little bit early. And so um, we got up and we left. And uh, as we were leaving, someone from the event actually came and he's like, hey, I, and he had a stack of papers in his, in his hand. He's like, hey, I want to give you these papers so that you, um, you know, you have a clue what's going on uh, in the future and, and things leading up to the event. And we're like, oh, thank you so much. And he came out to us and said, you know what, actually these papers were just an excuse for me to come and talk to you. And we're like, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting, but okay, like, you know, like, what's, what's up? And he said, I don't know what you guys believe about the prophetic. And I was like, well, we're vineyards, so like, yeah, we're all about the prophetic, that's, we love it. Uh, and he's like, okay, you know, great. Um, he said, I don't know if you guys have been um, trying to have kids. He said, but... The Lord told me to, for, to tell you guys to begin expecting and, and that he has promised you a son. And we were like, wow, I mean, that's, that's great. That's, that's amazing. Like, you really have no idea what that means to us because of, uh, you know, the struggles that we've been having with our miscarriage last year. And at that point, it had been 12 months since our miscarriage. And we were really beginning to become concerned about, man, are we able to, to have kids and things like that? And so we're like, man, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, but, you know, we were, we were just like, okay, this is cool. We wrote it down and, and we're just, you know, went, went back on with our lives. And I kid you not, uh, a one week later, we found out that Lauren was pregnant. One week later. And we were, we were just like shocked because it was just month after month of disappointment, disappointment. And, and we were really concerned. We did every sort of test that the doctors have out there to, to check your fertility and and the results didn't look promising for us in general. Um, but but I, I, may, I was like, Lord, we're gonna continue taking tests. We bought different brands and, and everything. And I was like, we're gonna continue retaking this because I want to be 100% positive that, I'm, that this, is, this is legitimate. And all the tests came back positive. And, and it's just such a, it's an exciting time for us. And just as the Lord's kind of brought us out of uh, the season that we were in last year. And so that's, that's why this is, this, this pregnancy and our, our future child is built upon promise. It's because somebody came and spoke the word of the Lord to us and that the Lord has promised this to us. And so in the same sense that, that our child is based on promise, um, so, so is the promises that the Lord spoke through to, to Abraham. And many of you may know who Abraham is in the Old Testament, but if you don't know, he's, he's one of just way back in time. He was a faithful man of God that the Lord really did a lot of things through. And so that's how this relates is that there's a lot of promises to Abraham, and there's, there was this promise to us, and this is going to intertwine throughout this entire story. I'm going to go ahead and, and we're going to open up Genesis chapter 12, and we're going to look at just some of the stuff that the Lord talked to Abraham about. It says that the Lord said to Abraham, <clears throat> go from your country and your, your kindred and your father's house to the land I will show you. And I will make, you, make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and, I will, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in all the families of the earth and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. 
And so Abraham, at this, he gets this word from the Lord to, hey, go to the spot I'm going to show you. And so where Abraham was, was at, is actually modern day uh, Iraq. And he moves kind of throughout the, the desert area there. And he ends up where sort of modern day Israel is. And I said, the, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. And so there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And so this is the, the foundation of what's called the Abrahamic covenant. The Abrahamic covenant. And what we, what we can take out of this is that there are three different pieces that the Lord has, has promised to Abraham in this covenant. The first thing we see is descendants. He's promised him descendants. He's, I will make of you a great nation. Number two, there's a promise of blessing to Abraham. He says, I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. And the third thing that he promises to Abraham is land. It's the land that he's going to show him, uh, which, which we now know as Canaan or, or Israel is really what we see now. And I want you to understand how powerful this covenant that the Lord made with Abraham is. There's, there's, there's two parts of this that I really want to highlight before I jump into the land. The land is really this idea of the promised land is the thing that I'm going to hone in on today. But I do want to outline the descendants and the blessing part just really quickly. Because so when, when the Lord promised Abraham that he was going to give him um, descendants, he had this idea of a promised son through Abraham's wife, Sarah. And he said, I'm going to give you a son through her. He, he tells him that later on. But Abraham and Sarah decided to take, take things into their own hands. And I'm sure they were talking like, oh, we can, like, God's going to bless us with descendants. Well, we're going, to, we're going to make that happen. And so they take one of their servants, make her a wife of Abraham, and they conceive a son through the servant. And so that's not, that was not God's intention for this whole thing, but solely because of the relationship that this child now has to Abraham as his son, the Lord actually blesses his son who is named Ishmael. And he blesses Ishmael just because of the promise that he said to Abraham that I will, make this, I will give you descendants. And so actually Ishmael went on to found the, the faith of Islam, which we now know as, as one of the major world religions to this day. And so God literally poured into something that he wasn't intending because of the power of that covenant that he made with Abraham. The next thing that he poured into was, was the blessing and the, the blessing and the cursing side of it. And so he said that I will bless them who bless you and I will curse those who dishonor you. And actually there was a point in time where Abraham and Sarah traveled to Egypt because of a famine. And Egypt was just the richest country uh, in that entire region at the time. So a lot of people, when, when famines would happen, they would, they would flock to Egypt um, for provision. And so they get there, and Abraham tells Sarah, hey, um, because of your beauty, I think if we go into this place as husband and wife, they're going to kill me and take you from me. And he's like, so let's just say we're brother and sister, and that way I'll live. Basically, it was a little selfish, but he's like, you know what, that's what we're going to do. And so they, uh, they get to Egypt, and lo and behold, they see her beauty, and she actually ends up um, catching fish. Uh, Pharaoh catching Pharaoh's eye and so he's like wow you know I'm gonna I'm gonna take her for my own and, and what Pharaoh said went and so Pharaoh makes this woman Sarah his concubine or his wife and in turn without even knowing it he's dishonoring the marriage between Abraham and Sarah and he didn't even know it but because of the covenant that the Lord made with Abraham or with Abram was, hey, uh, I'm going to bless those who bless you and curse those who dishonor you. And because the Pharaoh was dishonoring his marriage, he literally sent plagues to Egypt. He sent plagues to Egypt, and, and they were like, what is going on? Until they found out that, that Sarah and Abraham were actually husband and wife. And he's like, okay, you need to leave because I'm not going to deal with this. And so the Lord actually, through the power of that covenant with Abraham, he, he did many amazing miracles and many things uh, solely because, man, I love Abraham and I'm making my covenant with him. And so that's, that's the, the power of the covenant that the Lord made with him because of just who God is. And so now I want to talk about the third tenet of this covenant, which is the promised land. And we're going to be back in Genesis. This is in chapter 15 here. It says that, and, and God said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out from Ur, which is Iraq, of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. 
And he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? And he said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, and a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he brought him all these things, and cut them in half, and laid each half, against, uh, each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in half. All right, so, so this, is, this is the Lord establishing his covenant with him, and this is the, the rituals that they did in that time. Um, and then it says that when the sun had gone down and it was dark, behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. And there's a picture uh, that we're going to put up on the screen here so you can kind of get a general idea of what this would actually look like. Um, but they would, they would lay these animals uh, kind of down against each other and the, the blood would intermingle. And in there's a whole bunch of more to that. But the point I want you to get out of this is that uh, the smoking fire pot and the flaming torch passed between these pieces. And then it goes on to say that on this day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your offspring I will give this land, from the, rig- the river Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. Alright, so the smoking fire pot and the flaming torch passed between the animal pieces. And actually in, in the book of Jeremiah, there are discussions and Jeremiah talks about what happens when somebody breaks a covenant. It, they're, they're supposed to pass through the, through the animal pieces, the, those making the covenant as a sign of like, hey, I'm going to fulfill my end of the bargain. And then when you don't, essentially you're cursed to become like the, the cut in half animals that, that are laying on the ground there. And so, but what's interesting is the smoking fire pot and the flaming torch. We could go on about all the different types of theology about what that means and everything, but in the end what it comes, comes down to is that the smoking fire pot and the flaming torch represent God's presence. It represents God himself. God himself passes between these pieces. And notice Abraham does not. And this is the Lord's way of saying, I myself am going to fulfill this covenant for you. I myself. So he's swearing by himself that this covenant will be fulfilled. And and we know that the Lord, uh, he upholds his end of the bargain even when we don't. And so it carries a certain weight when we consider that, man, the Lord sealed this covenant on his own. It's like when you think about, in that time, uh, if you'd write a letter to somebody, if you'd write a letter, you would seal it with a, a wax seal to close the envelope, and you would seal it with some sort of inscription so that those receiving the letter would know who it is from. And so when the Lord seals this covenant with his own presence, it's his way of, of, of sealing an envelope with a message and it's, it's marking that, hey, this is from God. It's, if you received a, a letter with an inscription of somebody you didn't like, you might just throw it away, right? But if you received an inscription from, say, like one of the most powerful leaders in that time in that region, you would, you would look at it and you would open it hastily. So the understanding of God sealing this covenant with his own presence is that it carries a weight and an authority that a normal covenant would not. And that's why these blessings and these, the curses of this covenant are so important and they're so weighty and strong. And so um, as we talk about the promised land, I want to I wanna practically show you what the promised land looked like. So again, there's a picture on the screen here of, of the promised land. This is, this is outlined in number 34 exactly what the promised land uh, would look like. And so this, this is exactly what God had promised to them. When he was speaking to Moses. Um, and so at that point, Abraham, Abraham grows old and he dies. He has his, his kids and his lineage continues. And so he eventually dies and, and uh, the, the Israelites end up in captivity in Egypt. And we all know the, uh, the story of the Exodus. God frees them from Egypt, uh, their, from their bondage. He takes them out through the leadership of Moses. And so now Moses and, and the Israelites are heading towards the promised land. They wander for a long time, but they end up really close to the promised land. And then in Deuteronomy 34, we pick up from with what God is saying to Moses. And it says, Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pigsah, which is opposite of Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead as far as Dan, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim to Manasseh, and the land of Judah as far as the western sea. To uh, Negev, the plain that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of the palm trees, as far as Zoar, 
The Lord said to him, This is the land which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to your offspring. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. So the Lord takes Moses up onto this mountain, and he says, This is everything that you've been waiting for. This is everything that I've been promising to your descendants, to, to, or to, to, to your fathers, and to everyone in Israel. This is what you've been waiting for all this time. And so here's, here's an actual picture of it, of the very spot that Moses was standing. I, I've been to this spot. This is a picture that I took myself. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful valley. You can see like the Dead Sea there, which is the lowest point on, on earth. Um, and it's just a really, really beautiful um, uh, picture. And I was standing up there just thinking, man, like, like this, is what, this is the very spot that, that God took Moses up and he showed him. Man, this is everything that we've been waiting for, everything that was promised to us. This is like, you got to think, imagine the tension that is in Moses. First off, Moses was never allowed to go into the promised land. Different sermon, different story. I won't go into that. But, but it's, it's important to understand, man, like this is what we've been waiting for. This is all of our hope. All of our hope is put into this land, into this place. But I want to ask you a question about this. What if... It was never about the land. What if it was about more than the land itself? What if it was about more? I want you to, to if you got your Bible or, or your phone, go ahead and open Galatians chapter 3 um, and follow along here. This is just, this is verse 8. It says, Scripture, seeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham before, saying, In you the nations shall be blessed. Okay, so wait a second. God preached the gospel to Abraham? What does that, what does that mean? How, do we, how can we understand that? Because the, the, the covenant seemed to be about blessing land and descendants, right? Well, well, no, Galatians here says that it was actually about the gospel, about the salvation of mankind through Jesus. How is that even possible? I want you to, to, to picture it like this. So think about this. Laura and I, if you don't know uh, who Laura and I are, we are outreach pastors here, but we're also church planting into Greenville, South Carolina. And this is a big part of our life story right now. But um, important to know, we, we want to buy a house when we go to Greenville. We're, do- I, we're renting right now, and I'm just ready to buy a house, ready to have our own property. But what's, when, when you buy a house, most of the time you need to have what's called a down payment. Um, into a mortgage so that they say, hey, this is serious. You're a serious buyer of the house and you've got the finances to be able to, um, to buy this house. And so what I want you to, to, to picture the promised land as is a down payment towards something greater. Down payment towards something greater because well, it actually says in Galatians that, that God preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, to Abraham before. So that means that the land wasn't, wasn't everything promised. It was just a down payment towards the salvation and the redemption of mankind through Jesus. And I'll bet many of you have never considered the Old Testament to be a place where you can find the gospel, but it's riddled with the gospel, and it's amazing. And, and so we're going to go look at this. Here, here back in Genesis, we're going to go back to, to Abraham and see kind of where God was speaking about the gospel to him. And, and it says, uh, in Genesis 17, it says that, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. This is God talking to, to Abraham. It says, I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and your offspring after you throughout the generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. When he talks everlasting covenant, everlasting promises, everlasting possessions, he's talking about Jesus. The promised land is more than the physical land that they inherited, but it's the inheritance of Jesus as their Savior, their inheritance as sons and daughters into the kingdom of God. And so this is, this is Jesus. And so um, uh, we, when we look at what more of what God talked to Abraham about and how the covenant was sealed with Abraham, we can see how this relates between Christ and, and Abraham. 
And I want you to know, I'm sort of, I'm winding down the sermon here, but continue to keep in mind uh, that the gospel is more, or the land was more than just the, the land itself, but it was the, the idea of Christ and the gospel and our salvation. In Genesis 17, later on, he says, uh, God says to Abraham, for you, you shall keep my covenant and your offspring throughout their generations. And this is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. And so what that meant, circumcision for, for Abraham and all the men was a sign that, hey, I'm a part of this covenant. It was an identifier. I hope they weren't running around naked, like, eh, you know, so that everyone could see that they were a part of that covenant. But the, uh, this idea that um, circumcision, it, it, it was a marking of, hey, this, these are my people. They are part of my covenant. And so that was their identifier. Listen to what Colossians says about circumcision. This is Paul. This is the New Covenant. This is the New Testament. This is after Jesus died and was, was resurrected. It says that you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. In him you were circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands by putting off the body of flesh, the circumcision of Christ. Paul is referring, he's talking to to. Jews in that time to Israelites at that time who, who knew what circumcision was about. And so when he's talking about this, he's talking about the Abrahamic covenant. He's referring to them to say, hey, this is, this is the Abrahamic covenant that they were circumcised under, but you in the, in the covenant of Christ have been circumcised not in your flesh, but in your spirit. You've been circumcised, not in your flesh, but in the spirit. And what does that mean? It means we cut off our flesh. We put off our flesh and we come alive in the spirit. We come alive in the spirit. And, and so God, for, for seeing that that would happen, for seeing that that would happen, he, he literally gave us the, just the keys to our, our future in the old covenant. Because the old covenant is a shadow of things to happen in the new covenant, right? So when, when, when Abraham and all the men were circumcised, it was God sh foreshadowing to us that we're to be circumcised in our hearts and we're to cut off our flesh and come alive in God. So all along, this was about our freedom. This was about God reconciling us. It was about God bringing us back into the fold, into a right relationship with him. Galatians chapter 3 says, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. I just I love that we're heirs according to the promise. He's talking about the promise to Abraham. Not any other promise, but he's referring to God's promise to Abraham that we are, we are heirs according to that promise. God made a covenant with Abraham thousands of years ago that he would bring us back into the full, back into relationship with him. And we are called to walk in the circumcision of our hearts and be alive in Christ. And what's interesting, when you, when you walk in a promise, there's something different about the way you walk. And, and a moment of vulnerability here, when, when in our first pregnancy, um, there was concern, there was, there was um, fear, there was a lot of that type of thing, because there was no promise behind it. There was no promise, but when, but when we received this promise of the prophetic word that the Lord was, was giving us children, um, there's, there's a different way that we walk in confidence in this pregnancy because we know that it's from God. We know that, that God is going to fulfill his word because it's something that he brought forth of his own self, that he sealed with himself. And so we walk in confidence in this pregnancy and the health of our, of our baby and everything that's going to come from that. And, and that is the same idea that we are called to walk in as heirs to the promise. We are called to walk in freedom. We're called to walk in right relationship. And I feel like there are many of you listening today that, that don't know what that looks like. You may not have ever even known that the old, the old covenant, the Old Testament, had relationship with the New Testament and that God had foreseen you thousands of years ago and wanted you to walk in relationship with him. And if that's you um, online today, let somebody, let our moderators know, let somebody know who, who's online and, and we would love to pray for you. We'd love to, to, um, to walk you through what that looks like. Um, and, but, but what I want to do as I finish up here is pray and I want to encourage you that as we walk in the promise... We can walk with confidence. We can draw near to the throne with boldness 
because of what God said to Abraham thousands of years ago and fulfilled in his son Jesus Christ on the cross. The, the salvation of our souls, the forgiveness of our sin, and the giving of life to us in the spirit. I'm going to pray as we finish up. Uh, Jesus, I thank you. Thank you that you, you finished everything you started. God, as you uh, promised Abraham thousands of years ago, the blessing for us, the promised land, that Jesus, you are our promised land. And we can, we can look at you and we can see the truth of that. And Lord, in Jesus' name, I just ask that you would pour your spirit into people who don't know the full weight of the understanding that we are sons and heirs according to that promise. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that you're going to reveal things to people. You're going to speak to them wherever they're sitting right now about their sonship, their daughtership, their, just their inheritance in the kingdom of God. And we thank you. We love you. We praise you for your finished work on the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Andy, for that message this weekend. I hope that you feel inspired. I hope you feel encouraged. I hope that blessed your heart um, to hear what he had to say this weekend. And I hope that you are going to take some of the, the snippets of what he said and apply them to your, your life. And guys, if you need prayer this weekend in any way, shape, or form, simply reach out to the church right now and ask for prayer. Um, we believe in the power of prayer in this church, uh, power to, to heal your body, to heal your soul, to heal your, heal your mind, to heal your emotions, your relationships. We love to pray for people. You can reach out in the chat room if you're watching this live. You can message the church and go, man, probably pray for me because I got this thing in my life that's hindering me in my relationship with Jesus. It's hindering me from true freedom in Christ. And so reach out to us, get some prayer this weekend. We believe that that prayer can just totally resurrect uh, the situation that you are in. And come back and see us next weekend, live and in person at 10 or 11, 15 here in the facility or join us online on YouTube or on Facebook. We do those uh, streams both in the morning and in the evening. We are just so grateful that you've been a part of our community this Sunday and we cannot wait to see you back next weekend.